Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into my top five NFL draft losers in terms of fantasy football. In yesterday's video, we talked about the NFL draft winners for fantasy football. So if you want to check that out, make sure you wait until the end of this video and then go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. Before we get on into things, I would like to ask though, if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you do make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNT. So without further ado, let's get into my top five NFL draft losers for the 2023 fantasy football season. At number one, it is pretty obvious. It is Kenneth Walker, running back of the Seattle Seahawks, underdog ADP right now, currently coming off the board as the RB13 at pick 34.2, and I will not be drafting him at all if that is his ADP come late August or early September when I'm doing my redraft fantasy football drafts. That is far too high. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video talking about my do not draft running backs, and I talked about Kenneth Walker because I thought it was possible that the Seattle Seahawks end up drafting another running back behind Walker that could immensely devalue him. And now the draft happens just a couple of days ago, and that is exactly what they did. The Seattle Seahawks drafted Zach Charbonnet in the second round of the draft. Pete Carroll has stated that Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet will be battling for the number one running back role. Remember, Kenneth Walker was not a first round draft pick last year in the NFL draft. He was also a second round draft. Pick. And even if you think Walker is an incredibly skilled player, which I also believe, you have to be incredibly worried with the fact that Zach Charbonnet is now there. Kenneth Walker had a great rookie season, right? RB 16 and a half PPR in the year in 2022. RB 14 and a half PPR points per game, tied with Ramondre Stevenson. Playing in 15 games with 11 starts, obviously it took a Rashad Penny injury for Kenneth Walker to get elevated into that starting role. 228 carries, 15.2 game number 11 at running back 1051 rushing yards 70.1 per game number 11 35 targets 2.3 per game 34th 27 receptions 1.8 per game 33rd 165 receiving yards 11 per game 42nd and nine total touchdowns 14th at running back so again a great rookie year i am not here to discredit the skill that kenneth walker has now, he did struggle in terms of some efficiency stats. He only had 4.1 true yards per carry, 38th of running back, though he did create 2.97 yards created per touch, 12th at running back. He was negative 28.3 expected points added, number 148 at running back. So while he was in a good system, he was on a good team. Geno Smith took that team to another level Kenneth Walker, based upon the EPA stat, whether you want to believe it or not, other running backs probably could have done a similar thing in his scenario. And now with Zach Charbonnet there, who again, they drafted in the second round. It's not like they drafted some random running back you've never fucking heard of out of University of Buttfuck, right? Okay, it's not some random running back. This is Zach Sharb Ane, a running back that a lot of people liked coming into the draft and a running back that could easily take over for Kenneth Walker. So again, regardless of what you think about Kenneth Walker's skill set, and I'm not trying to dispute that, Zach Charbonnet throws a large wrench into this scenario, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are just a one-two punch to start the season, and I wouldn't be surprised halfway through the season if Zach Charbonnet took over as the lead back. Now, I'm not saying he's going to get 90% of the carries and Kenneth Walker is going to become irrelevant, but would it surprise me if he was the snap share leader 55 to 45 over Walker? No, no, it wouldn't. So Walker is a humongous draft day loser. At number two, we got another running back. We got Tyler Algier, running back of the Atlanta Falcons, current underdog ADP, running back 14 at pick 125.1. If you guys do not want to wait to do fantasy football drafts until late August, early September, you can draft right now on underdog fantasy. They just opened the best ball mania for $25 entry, the biggest best ball tournament yet. The tournament is absolutely huge. Millions of dollars that you could potentially rake in in this tournament. I'll be doing drafts on my channel 
on there that you guys will be able to see very, very soon. If you click on the link in the video description down below, you'll get up to a $100 first match deposit bonus. So if you deposit $100 on the website, they will give you an additional $100. If you only want to do, say, $20, they'll give you an additional $20. It's a 100% first match deposit bonus up to $100. Make sure you check it out. Link in the video description. I love doing best ball drafts early. Super fun, and the best part about best ball, you don't have to worry about editing your lineup. So whoever the highest scores are every single week, they just get thrown into your lineup so you don't make any stupid decisions during the season. So back on into things. Again, make sure you check that out. Link in the video description. The Falcons obviously drafted Bajan Robinson eighth overall in the 2023 NFL Draft, which completely plummets any inkling of value that Tyler Algier had. Now, I actually don't think that Tyler Algier is a bad pick in fantasy football at RB41, pick 125.1, because if something was to happen to Bajan Robinson, knock on wood, we do not root for injuries, then Tyler Algier might actually be a premier handcuff in fantasy football because we know the Atlanta Falcons love to run the rock. They did not draft a quarterback. They're going to go with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke. So I already feel very confident that they're going to run the ball a shit ton so Algier did lose his role as the RB1. So he's definitely a draft loser, but I don't think that necessarily makes him undraftable. Whereas I really feel like I don't want anything to do with Kenneth Walker at his price. But again, Algier will need an injury to do anything fantasy relevant um, for at least you to be confident to start him, right? There's going to be games where Algier scores a touchdown or maybe even scores two touchdowns behind John Robinson. But we all know Unless you're in like a 32-team league, you don't want to be starting Algier unless there's an injury. Running back 27 and half PPR last season, RB33 in half PPR points per game tied with Antonio Gibson. 16 games played with seven starts last year, 210 carries, 13.1 per game, 17th at running back, 1,035 rushing yards, 65.7 per game, number 14 at running back, 17 targets, 1.1 per game, 65th, 16 receptions, one per game, 56th, 139 receiving yards, 8.7 per game, 48th, and four total touchdowns, 40. First, he was actually really efficient last year as well. 4.6 true yards per carry, 20th, 5.2 yards per touch, 19th, and 6.2% breakaway run weight, uh, run rate, 18th. I really didn't think the Falcons were going to draft John Robinson. I know that was a big rumor going into the draft that that would happen. So I wasn't really surprised when it happened, if anyone was watching me live stream the draft, but I don't love the landing spot because I thought that they we're confident in Algier. Algier was good enough to where they didn't have to draft Bajan. Now, Bajan's going to feast in fantasy, so he's going to be just fine, but it does kind of suck for Tyler Algier, who I think could have been the workhorse back on the Falcons this year and would have been a massive steal even where he was going prior to his ADP moving, but now he's just a guy I'll select as a nice handcuff for Bajan Robinson with upside, but again, Bajan Robinson just completely destroyed Algiers' chance at being the RB1 and really putting up maybe a top 18 season without Bajan Robinson. At number three, we move out of the running back position to the wide receiver, Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the Seahawks drafted Jackson Smith and Najigba in the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft. And I know that rookie wide receivers, sometimes it could take some time for them to really ramp things up. But JSN and Lockett play a very similar role. So this definitely hurts Lockett significantly more than it would hurt DK Metcalf. So while Lockett was feasting last year, he's getting older. He's getting up there in age. So that's exactly why they drafted Jackson Smith and the Jigba. And now they have a fearsome threesome at the wide receiver position with Metcalf, Lockett, and JSN. Lockett was great last year. I was off of Lockett. I thought Geno Smith was as good as fucking dust. I thought the guy was terrible. I thought, based upon what I've seen out of Geno Smith throughout his NFL career, that I didn't think he was good, and he proved me wrong. He basically stiff-armed me through the screen. And Lockett was a huge benefactor of Geno Smith dominating 50 Shades of Grey style last season. But when push comes to shove, and we are sitting here now, after what happened, after they drafted JSN, I can't tell you that I want to draft Tyler Lockett. Now, will I end up drafting him on some teams for the upside? Of course I will. But will I feel... As confident as I did prior to the draft? Obviously not. You can't feel as confident as you did going into the draft. 
especially since he's coming off the board, is the wide receiver 32 at pick 68.1. And again, I hope what you garnered from this take is not that I think that Tyler Lockett's age is going to make him washed. It's just the situation has gotten worse for him. I don't even think it's a crazy thing to say that Lockett outscores Jackson Smith and the Jigba in his rookie year. But I think the fact that JSN is there is just enough to make me really fade away. Again, Lockett had a great year. Wide receiver, 13 half PPR on the season, 15 and half PPR points per game, tied with Devontae Smith, the Slim Reaper, and Amari Cooper. Played in 16 games, had 117 targets, top 25 at wide receiver, 84 receptions, top 14 at receiver, 1,000 plus receiving yards, 1,033, 19th, nine total touchdowns, fourth. He was great in target separation, 2.25 target separation, fifth at receiver, 7.9 target accuracy. Gino was cooking, 14th in a 51.3% route win rate, fifth. So again, while I just kind of gave you all these positives for Lockett, the situation is just not it for me. And I, I think, again, while I say I'll, I'll draft him on a couple teams, sure. If I draft 10 redraft teams, he might end up on one or two teams. But he's not a guy that I'm actively looking for. And it's pretty clear to me that he is a draft loser. At number four, we got Dawson at Knox one time. If you're with me, my guy, tight end of the Buffalo Bills, underdog ADP, tight end 14, pick 137.5. Five, the Buffalo Bills were a team that was rumored, oh, maybe they'll go running back in the first round, but then we saw Gibbs and Bajan go too early. They're not going to get a running back. Maybe they go receiver, right? Gabe Davis didn't really pan out, but no, they go with Utah's finest Dalton Kincaid in the first round. Now, this could be a Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski without the killing situation, right? And maybe Knox and Kincaid can both flourish. But at tight end number 14, am I going to take a tight end that is very clearly going to have another tight end taking up a lot of snaps? The answer is fuck no, baby. Of course I'm not going to do that. That would be insane to think. I don't even think you should be drafting Dawson Knox. I think Dawson Knox is a bi-week fill-in. If your other tight end isn't able to go that week, they're injured or they're on bye week, then bam, you throw Dawson Knox in. Oh, you get the upside. He's on the Buffalo Bills. This is a team that's going to score a shit ton of times. This is a great offense. They got Josh Allen. I'm getting on my knees and giving them the gawk gawk 9,000. We all know the Buffalo Bills are good. We know they're good. We know they're great. They're great. Tony the Tiger. But Dalton Kincaid has thrown, just like we talked about with Lockett and JSN, a wrench in into the situation. I love Dawson Knox. I'm a Dawson Knox aficionado. I love Dawson Knox. Struggled last year. 15 games played. Wasn't amazing. 65 targets, 48 receptions, 517 receiving yards, six total touchdowns. He was pretty efficient. Josh Allen has 7.9 target accuracy when throwing to Dawson Knox. Eighth at tight end, 96% true catch rate, sixth at tight end, 41.7 contested catch rate, 17th. So again, this isn't a slight on Dawson Knox skill set. It's just the fact that there's too many cooks in the kitchen now with Dalton Kincaid. And unless we get to like late August, again, it's still early. It's May 2nd. It's almost May the 4th be with you, but it's May 2nd. It's early, right? Still early. Maybe we get to late August during camp preseason. We're seeing, okay, Knox is clearly the tight end. He's the red zone guy still, not Kincaid. Bang, I will draft Dawson Knox. But right now, it feels very gross to click the draft button on him, especially on Underdog. Link in the video description. Final player to discuss here at number five, my another one of my guys, Rashad Master Bateman, wide receiver of the Baltimore Ravens. Underdog ADP, wide receiver 49 at pick 104.2. Now, Bateman didn't only just get shafted by the draft. He also got shafted by the fact that they brought in Odell Beckham Jr. and gave him some pretty big money. They also selected Zay Flowers in the first round. The Ravens are notoriously a team where, with under Lamar Jackson, you draft Mark Andrews. Maybe you want to draft a late round fly like I like Bateman last year. Ooh, he's the wide receiver one for Lamar Jackson. And you draft him and they end up not being the best. But now we have Bateman, who I think is a talented player. Like, I, I don't think he's bad. Bateman's very fast. They have Zay Flowers. They have Odell. Too many players. Too many players. Now, I get it on underdog, right? You're looking for those spike weeks, those best ball, huge games. And you don't have to worry about throwing them in your lineup because they automatically go in there. But how in 
how are you going to figure out when the hell to start Rashad Bateman unless there's an injury? How are you ever going to be like, you know what, even against this bad defense? No, because like Zay Flowers might be the number two receiver on the team. Odell's the number one, right? Bateman might be the number three receiver. It's not like he has this crazy chemistry with Lamar either. Last year was the wide receiver 110 in half PPR. Wide receiver 54 in half PPR points per game. Tied with Donovan Peoples-Jones. He only played in six games with five starts. 28 targets, 4.7 per game, 116th. 15 receptions, 2.5 per game, 120th. 285 receiving yards, 47.5 per game, 102nd. And two total touchdowns, 76. And he missed so many games that he doesn't even qualify for most of the efficiency stats that I look at on player profiler. So let's just call a spade a spade, right? This situation is awful. They're on a team that also wants to run the ball. They're on a team that very clearly wants to throw the ball to Mark fucking Andrews. And now you have three wide receivers. You have too many cooks in the kitchen. This is very easy. You don't want to overthink things. You don't want to let the little hamster in your brain run around a million different times and you start thinking crazy things. You start thinking, you know what, Nick? Rashad Bateman this, Rashad Bateman this. Nick, you love Nick, you loved Rashad Bateman last year. Well, I loved him because he was the only motherfucker on this team that I was confident is an actually good wide receiver. Now, they have not one, not two, but three. Trace, as they say in Spanish, in Espanol, Rashad Bateman is a clear bust. Rashad Bateman is an NFL draft loser. Do not draft him. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I love you guys all so much. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that like button down below as well. And if I missed anyone you want to talk about, talk about in the comment section or anything, anything fantasy football related. How's your life doing? Let me know. I love all of you guys so much. The Devils won yesterday. Go Devils, baby. We beat the Rangers. We took out the trash. Playing the Canes this week. Uh, obviously, you guys know I'm a Dolphins fan. We got Dan Marino in the back. We got um, the Dolphins uh, logo that my fiance drew for me or painted for me a couple years ago. I appreciate her. The painting looks good. Um, I am from New Jersey, so I'm a Devils fan. I also love the Dolphins. Dolphins are my number one team. Devils are number two. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the hockey playoffs, let me know who's going to win the Stanley Cup. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, goodbye. Go Devils. Boy.